United Nations today, Grace Clack from Microsoft. Grace, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, George. I'm really excited to be here. There's been some inspiring conversations today. To say the least, there has been some incredible dialogue and insights and perspectives on helping to do exactly what you're working on, actually. Um, we are so proud to be working with Microsoft for the simple reason that we share an ethos. And yes, it is a Greek word, ethos. <laughs> and we share that ethos because you all are helping to achieve all of the 17 global goals. We could talk about the work you're doing in Ukraine and on and on. Uh, it, it's profound. We heard about it uh, during our summit at ACS Athens in Greece. And our colleagues from Microsoft Greece uh, articulated that. In fact, they were awarded a um, recognition by the Ukrainian government for their work in, in the current situation. But on a much lighter note, but equally important um, and severe, we all know that the climate crisis we're in needs to be addressed. Um, the world, the globe, is warming by 1.5 degrees Celsius uh, by, one, by 2050. If we are going, going to alter the trajectory of the planet, something has to happen. Mm -hmm. Right, Grace? Mm -hmm. Luckily, and fortunately, in the past few years, we've seen companies like Microsoft make pledges to reduce their carbon emissions and to do their part to address the climate crisis. Why is it important for the private sector? We've heard a lot about the private sector. No one can do it alone. And what I believe and I, and I like about the United Nations is that there's a recognition that corporate, NGO, public sector need to come together because no one entity, not even one government, can do it alone. And so why is it important for the private sector to get involved in tackling this issue? And why are they doing it? What is compelling you and Microsoft to do this? Yeah, thank you. It, it, it's a great question. Oh. It's a great question. There are 3,470 companies across the globe that have made climate pledges. Those companies add up to 80% of the world's GDP. So you can imagine the impact that those companies collectively have on global emissions and what the impact could be if they all reach net zero. And the pressure is coming from all sides for these companies. Um, investors, we heard from um, many of our in investment uh, friends today that they are putting financial pressures on companies that haven't made these pledges. 73% say that efforts to improve the environment and society actually do impact their financial decisions. Uh, Jason mentioned the impact, impact quotient, I think you called it, and that's a great example. Um, customers today are voting with their values. 77% of customers say that they're motivated to purchase from companies that are trying to do good in this world. And then um, I believe, I'm sorry, I forgot her name earlier, uh, who was just up here, she was talking about um, regulators are starting to tighten controls and um, reporting and mandating reporting is coming. And then last, employees. Employees want to work for companies that are doing good. 93% of employees say companies should lead with purpose. At Microsoft, we have 8,000 employees in our sustainability community alone. That's incredible. And that's, a, that's, that's an impact statement that I think is worth mentioning, is that it's built into the DNA of the company to do good. And I fully believe, I fully believe that the more, the better a company does, the more good it can do. So it's completely aligned with what we're talking about here today. And what about Microsoft? I know you all came out with a sustainability commitment in mm -hmm. early 2020. Grace, can you tell us a little bit, let us, let us see behind the curtain a bit yep. about these commitments and how you've progressed yes. against those measurements. So you're right, January 2020, we came out with a pledge that by 2030 we would be carbon negative, zero waste and water positive by 2030. We've actually been carbon neutral since 2013, but we do want to get to carbon negative. So a few pieces of progress. 
Uh, in FY21 and 22, so across both of those years, we collectively, or I'm sorry, we contracted um, successfully to remove 2.5 million carbon metric tons um, of, car sorry, of carbon dioxide. And that was our goal for those two years collectively. With respect to water, we have 21 water replenishment projects across the globe, across nine different water basins. And so far, that's saved 1.3 million volumetric meters of water. And then in FY21, we diverted 15,200 tons of solid waste that otherwise would have gone to incinerators uh, or landfills. Incredible. And, and these, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to really grasp the impact of what you're talking about here. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's enough to do something in your own home, right? And to put a, you know, water saving device in a shower or, or sink or whatever. But to think about what you're doing collectively to change the world on this sustainability effort is, is truly profound. And so with all of this progress, so we're talking about progress throughout the planet. What have you learned? What have you learned, Grace, that you can share with the folks in this room today from across the world and those that will see this across the planet? Can you share with us what these things are that Microsoft has taught you on this journey? Yes, and we're pleased with the progress. It's obviously not where we want to get just yet. But, and it's not about necessarily our journey, but what we're learning on that journey because it's important that we do something with those learnings and we share those learnings because we know, as we've all said here, it's not gonna take just one company, it's not gonna take just one entity, it's going to take all of us. So one of the things we learned uh, is, and um, Gretchen had brought this up earlier, is migrating to the cloud. So our migration to the cloud, so moving our data centers from on-premises to the cloud, actually we, we saw a reduction of our carbon footprint by 98%. Utilizing smart buildings, we saw a reduction in our energy consumption by 20%. And then one of the things we also learned was that we actually, we need accountability from our suppliers. We talked, I heard, I think it was our friend from NRF was talking about um, the need to understand the emissions from your different scopes. Scope three is up and down your value stream. And so in 2020, we required from our suppliers to report on their emissions. We got 12% compliance. Uh, the following year, we got 88%, which is great. Um, but again, it's not just about our journey, it's what we're doing with it. And so with all those learnings, we developed a solution called the Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability. This is a solution, it's an end-to-end -end solution. It's um, comprehensive, it is um, integrated, automated, uh, sustainable management system that's for any organization, uh, regardless of where they are in their journey. And then within that, we actually have an application, Microsoft Sustainability Manager, that allows companies to measure and monitor their progress against their goals today. Incredible, and we all know that uh, what gets measured gets done, apparently. I try to follow that philosophy, try to get a little, more, a little bit more done. But if a company the size of Microsoft is measuring, um, I feel relatively assured that you can move the needle. And that's what's happening. And there is a way to go. And you mentioned January 2020. January 2020, as Chantaline knows, was pre-pandemic, shockingly. January 2020. I'm, I'm still coming out of this tunnel. And here we are, just three years later, trying to achieve and catch up to everything that's happened over the past few years. And so what kinds of challenges, Grace, what kinds of challenges are companies facing as they think about their own sustainability journey and actually develop their own sustainability plans? Yeah. There are still lots of challenges, as we've all been talking about. There is a lack of standards right now with respect to recording and reporting on our emissions. There is a very slow manual process with collecting data. Offline spreadsheets, we're still using those. And we need to get to the calculation of that data and the reporting of that data to be automated. 
but it can't get there right now because data is very siloed. It's disparate across organizations and that data needs to come together into a common data model. And then another lack of, uh, or a lot, um, some challenge, one last challenge, is the lack of value chain transparency. And we kept talking about it. Scope three makes up such a huge portion of our, uh, of an average company's emissions, it's like 90%. So Microsoft is, I think it's 98%. And so it's still a challenge today to be able to get that data from suppliers. And you're helping with that. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so I know that there's a, there's a lot of effort in this room to tackle this, which is amazing and it's so inspiring. And, and yet I think that the attempt to tackle it can feel daunting. Um, but I just wanna say that we, we do have the ability to get there. We, we can do it. Um, and as Gretchen said earlier, it all starts with data. Data is power. Um, having that data when it's reliable and timely um, and that one source of truth is really going to, it, it's where you start. And our president, um, Brad Smith, has said that if you're making these commitments uh, and these pledges without data, you're deceiving yourself into thinking that you're making progress when you're not. So interesting and, and so powerful. Data. We've heard a lot about data. <laughs> Gretchen has taught us a lot about data over the past several years. And gosh, to see it all come together, especially here at the UN, um, I know that, uh, pointing out Chantaline again, she loves data. And without data, yeah. uh, and Tess as well, and Sergio and everyone else here, I mean, everyone's nodding because data, data is very important. And so they start with data, but Grace, mm -hmm. where do they go from here? How can a company go from commitment to progress? Yeah. Absolutely, it starts with data, but the point of the data is to be able to assess first where you are today. So understand what your footprint is today before you can even set the goals and set the strategies to get to where you need to be. From there, then you can accelerate your progress. You can actually start reducing the impact of your emissions, and then ultimately, it's about transformation. So transforming your business operations, removing traces of your footprint, and replacing those higher impact resources with ones that are gonna be more efficient and that will drive us ultimately to a more sustainable future. And that's the last word, Grace Clack, <laughs> Microsoft. I think we'll all rest assured this evening that the world will be a better place thanks to you. Thank you, Grace.